Hey Chestnuts, Sasha here and welcome to the Spanner Lab. Today I'm going to be showing you a checkmate. Former US chess champion Frank Marshall, who was one of the first people to be given the title Grandmaster, said the hardest thing in chess is to win a one game. Basically it's all very well and good being able to take pieces, but can you actually checkmate when it counts? I'm going to show you how. So today we're going to be looking at the Rook and Queen checkmate. It's one of the easiest endgame checkmates to learn, and it comes up a lot. Here's an example from one of my students' recent games. So this is a game between Ultra Vesolus with the white pieces, and Lieutenant Venoms with the black pieces. After the Queen takes on d5, it's white's turn to move. Can you spot the checkmate? So notice that white's Queen controls all of the squares on the seventh rank so the king can't move to the seventh rank if we can make a check that controls all of these squares on the eighth rank it's going to be checkmate so can you find a move that does that well if you spot a mate rook takes e8 checkmate well done the rook controls all of the king's remaining squares and with the queen covering all of these squares, there's nowhere left to go. The king can't run off the edge of the board to escape, so the game is over. Now let's have a look at a simpler position. So here we have Ash with the white pieces and Ultra of a Solace who's managed to get to a winning endgame by promoting his pawn. He's got a simple plan that is going to result in checkmate and a win for black. He had a plan to deliver checkmate and he delivered it perfectly. So starts by moving to b4. Doesn't matter that it's check, it's just getting the pieces lined up. Um, king moves. Next, the rook moves. The king moves back. The queen moves. The king moves back. Mate and the rook moves to deliver checkmate. So if we look at the pattern these pieces make as they walk down the board, you'll see that it's like footsteps all the way down, um, as if you'd just taken your fingers and, and walked down the board. That's how your rook and your queen have got to be. So one moves, then the other moves. One traps the king, then the other delivers check. Delivers check, delivers check, delivers checkmate. The beauty of this technique is it doesn't matter where the king starts off. Unless you're running out of time, you don't need to worry about getting the fastest checkmate. Just get your queen and your rook working together. And walk them up the board to checkmate. So step one is to set up your queen. You want to trap the king on one side of the board. I like setting up the queen first. Decide which edge of the board you want to checkmate the king on. The aim of this is to trap the king on one side of the board. Decide which edge of the board you want to give checkmate on. Now it's easiest to do that if you keep your king out of things. So if you can keep your king completely out of the way, it's going to be easiest. So I want to try and push this king this way. So I want to try and put the, push the black king in the opposite direction to my king. So my first plan is going to figure out some way of controlling all of these squares and trapping the king on this side of the board. So I like to set up the queen first. So I want to put my queen somewhere on the fourth rank. So where do I put it? Well, I've got two squares that I can put the queen onto. So I could go here or I could go here. Which one should I do? If you picked g4, great. That's right. Um, the reason I can't put it on c4 is if you look, the king can now take. So this would have been a mistake. I've now got to figure out a different way to get checkmate that's going to be a lot harder. So we need to make sure that the square we pick is safe. And this square, g4, is safe. 
So now I've set up what I like to call an electric fence. It's a line that the king can't cross or he's going to get an, a nasty shock. Um, now, just like in a modern monarchy, the king doesn't really have anything to, useful to do at this point. Um, so let's just move the king to e5. It, there's, it makes no difference. So now, now that I've got my, my electric fence in, in place, I'm going to move my rook to give check, because the queen's already got an important job to do. The rook's not doing anything. So it's time for the rook to give a forcing move check. So the rook moves up to give check here. Uh, now the king only has two two squares it can move to, uh, here and here. Um, so let's take a look at what happens if it moves to d6, because that's the easiest. So now my rook is setting up my electric fence. My queen is going to be the one that gets to give the check. So queen moves up, check, and the king must once again move back towards the edge of the board and to the inevitable checkmate. So once again, my queen is looking after all of the squares on the sixth rank. And now the rook is going to be the one that gives check. So they take it in turns. One sets up the electric fence and the other one gives check. So now my rook is going to give check. There we go. And the king has to move back to the eighth rank where it will be checkmated. Now, can you spot the checkmate? If you spotted queen to g8, mate. well done. That is checkmate. So I said that there was a little complication. Well, what if after rook to h5, instead of going to d6, the black king had gone to f6 instead? Well, we've got our rook setting up the electric fence. Can we not just check with our queen? Well, let's see what happens if we check with our queen. So if we check with our queen, the problem is the queen is too close to the king and the king can just take it. We're still in a winning position, but it's going to be a lot harder to get checkmate and we're going to have to come up with a new plan. So that's what happens. Now, what should you do instead of um, moving the queen? Well, let's see. If we put the rook and the queen on opposite squares, rook to g6 would be fine because the king can't take it. So we need to find a way of bringing the rook closer than the queen. And we do this by rook f5 check. So just as it was with our electric fence, the queen is covering all of these squares and is also protecting this rook. So the king has no choice but to move away and closer to the middle. Now we've got our rook being protected by our queen all the way down. It doesn't matter how close this king gets because it's never going to get close enough to threaten the queen and the queen is going to be protecting the rook the whole way. So now we can just walk our pieces up the board and it doesn't matter how close the king gets. Mate. It's never going to be able to take that rook. So if the king gets a little bit too close for comfort, just move the rook closer to the king, just making sure it's protected by the queen. So if you think you've got the hang of a rook and queen checkmate, uh, try out the puzzles on Lee Chess. I've linked to them in the description. Lee Chess is a great free website for playing and learning chess. I am proud to support Lee Chess as a patron uh, because of what they give to me and my students. Uh, if you're not quite yet there yet, Try restarting the video, grab a chessboard, and try playing along at home. Well, that's it. Now you know how to do a rook and queen checkmate. Uh, if you learned something, please like the video. If you'd like to see more checkmates, please subscribe. 
leave me a, a comment if you want anything explained and I will see you again very soon. Bye!